So we are exactly on time for the next presentation. We keep on the topic of using CAD tools. And this will be presented by Akbar Hesabi and Mostafa Ahmadi. Good. Uh, hello, everybody. I hope you are doing well and staying safe. I'm Mostafa Ahmadi. Uh, I'm a PhD student uh, at the University of uh, Isfahan. Uh, and I want to talk about uh, some advantages and uh, disadvantages of computer-aided literary uh, translation. And my case is uh, a gentleman in Moscow. Next slide, please. Uh, we use technology uh, to make things easier for us, uh, depending upon the features of uh, our text. And next, please. Uh, and we know that, uh, next slide, please. Well, uh, and we know that translating a literary uh, work in a cat tool cannot be the same as uh, translating a technical informative uh, text. So questions uh, to, uh, next uh, slide please. Questions uh, to uh, explore in uh, this study uh, were, does CAT tool help or hinder translating uh, literary work? And can translation of special types of literary text benefit more from cat tools. So, uh, yes, the case was uh, a gentleman in Moscow, a novel by Amor Tolls. It's a historical novel. It has many characters. It is fictional, but it has many intratextual and intertextual references to uh, real people in the story, real places in the world, and literary, artistic, philosophical works, authors, etc. Next, the uh, cat tool was Tradus, and the language curve was from English into Persian. Let me go to the uh, advantages. The most important advantage in this uh, case study was segmentation. Uh, it is really uh, difficult uh, that uh, we work on hard copies. Uh, we, we have hard copies and want to work on uh, computer files, even uh, switching from electronic files into each other uh, would be uh, really inconvenient. Well, so segmentation was very uh, helpful. Uh, Mitchell Schwitterwarder mentions that, believes that it is not only repetition that should be uh, regarded as the criterion for using TMs and CAT tools. And uh, the emphasis, the bold place here is my uh, emphasis, uh, of course. Uh, let me go to the features. She mentions that uh, many cat tools are uh, important for all types of genres, formats, etc. Uh, side by side presentation of STMTT is one of them, prevention of omission, searching functions, uh, that uh, power loss does not affect TM. Autocorrection and accuracy, uh, accuracy checks, revision features, third party revision, integration of uh, many tools in one program, and the history of uh, previous matches are the uh, features she uh, lists. Next, please. Because of these features, 
She believes that cat tool, as I told, uh, can be used with different genres, styles, and formats. It supports our personal working memory, and it remembers might, uh, what might have slipped our mind. Next, please. Well, uh, another uh, important, uh, in fact, uh, aspect of translating the novel in the uh, cat tool was consistency. We know that in literary texts, usually there are uh, no repetitions. Repetitions are rare there, but wherever there are, whenever they are, we can make use of them. Let me to, uh, go to the uh, uh, categories and the examples. The first category is uh, key passages, poems, phrases, titles. Yeah. Uh, Translating a poem, yes, uh, is a creative act. But if in a uh, text, in a novel, in a story, uh, wholly or partly is repeated, uh, they should be treated consistently. And cat tool can be uh, helpful here. Uh, helpful here. Well, next slide, which is the translation of uh, uh, this one and the next one. These two poems were partly, part of them, of course, were repeated in the uh, novel. The next one, please, is translation and the next one. Thank you. There are also cliche phrases or sentences or questions. Perhaps uh, they happen in different uh, texts. Uh, in these cases, again, uh, cat tool can be of help. They appear as themes time and again in the uh, novel. Uh, the next, yes, even some phrases as I told and some words, as you may see. The next one, please. Well, the next category was characters of the novel. Next, please. This is the main character of the novel, Count. Alexander Illich Rostov. The full characterization and uh, different characterizations of it appear in the novel, as you see in the term base. Yes, Count Alexander, Alexander Illich Rostov, Alexander Rostov. Okay, putting them in the uh, term base can be uh, very helpful to the translator. Next one, please. Furthermore, in uh, Persian, uh, in Persian language, it is quite possible to have different variants or spellings of a name. So uh, it may happen that the, translate, uh, the translator make mistake or uh, forgets what variant uh, he used previously. So before the work, the translator can do enough study and search of the orthography and the variant, put it on the special term base for the project, then use it consistently all through the text. There are uh, many characters in this novel, as you can see in other slides, please. Yeah, another one. And the next one, please. Well, and there were also other characters who were uh, indirectly related to the novel and to the characters of the novel. Again, uh, you may see the examples, please. Well, yes, let's see the examples. Okay. Let me point uh, something about the frequency of names and words. Uh, cat, uh, cat tool can be helpful with both high frequency and low frequency names. With high frequency name, 
uh, names it speeds up uh, speeds up the work and with low frequency words it uh, reminds the translator of what he did before yes because i may forget but my cat tool does not let's go to another category well that was objects means instruments tools etc well next one these were uh, the ones which were repeated uh, through the um, uh, through the novel were thank you and let's see some other examples and there were cultural terms which were another category including next please games and customs as you may see next food and drink and the related items next and next well this is another category organizations institutions and companies names well next please examples which can be very long ones and make difficult the the work of the translator and the next please again yes next this is another category places countries cities and uh, nationalities let's go through the examples yeah next yeah please yeah well yes yes next one well and this is the final category which uh, includes literary artistic philosophical political characters works etc which the novel abounds with, yeah, including the name of the literary and artistic works. Let's go through the examples. There are many of them in the slides. Well, yeah, the names of uh, the characters in them. Well, yes. Well, uh -huh, yes. Authors, philosophers, yeah. Well, yes, yeah. Uh, especially with this last car, uh, last category, um, we think uh, corpora of literary text could be uh, very helpful. We didn't use any, but if we had, we think it could be very helpful. And this uh, goes in line with our Chinese proposition in. 2008, that literary translation could benefit from having access to corpora of literary texts. Next, please. And uh, now I want to go to the uh, disadvantages. Actually, everything, uh, next, please, about uh, creativity falls here because literary uh, translation is an act of creation is an act of recreation. The translator is an, an, an agent who intervenes, okay? So everything here is new. Uh, and uh, here, segmentation uh, can be uh, the greatest help to the translator because everything is new and awaits your artistry. Next, please. Yeah. To uh, go to some examples, polysemy can be one, one of the uh, problematic areas. Next. In the uh, novel, there was a character who was called a bishop, and bishop was used with its uh, polysemic word, both as a cleric and as a chess piece. But in Persian language, there was no word which can convey this polysemous word this, this polysemous uh, in fact uh, sense so uh, it had to be translated in 
at least six different ways, depending upon the context and situations. Next one, please. Well, yeah, these are examples of uh, polysemy, the next one. And rhyming is another uh, category of uh, which can be problematic because here again, term bases cannot be trusted with and the translator should create uh, the rhyme to have, uh, to have its special effect. Next one. Yes, uh, there are additions deletions and descriptions for intended uh, literary effects. And the next one. And there are intertextual relations uh, with target li literature, as, as the examples can show. The first one, the first uh, example, uh, the example has an uh, intertextual relationship with uh, a poem by Sohrab Sethri and a, a famous Iranian uh, poet. The second one with Rumi, and the third one uh, with a dialogue in a uh, well known uh, film uh, in uh, Iranian cinema, known as Suta Delan. Okay. Uh, so uh, here, the, translation, uh, the translator should uh, act actively. And yes, tags may pose problems. And uh, next one, please. Uh, tags may pose problems because there are house styles, because there are personal styles, because there are literary uh, conventions. Wherever uh, tags pose problem, uh, they should be left to the final revision in the word processor to be uh, dealt with. Next, please. And this is my conclusion. Next, please. Uh, yeah, it is very important to have sensible expectations regarding cat tools and the features of our text. We should look at the technology from the right angle. Otherwise, we may be frustrated with the technology. Well, next one, please. Yeah, in the novel, A Gentleman in Moscow, which was a historical novel, it had many characters and many intratextual and intertextual references. Segmentation was very great, uh, a very great help. And consistency, uh, partly, okay, could be achieved uh, at the level of key passages, poems, phrases, and titles, characters, objects, e uh, equipment, means, and uh, instruments, cultural terms, including games and customs, food and drink, organizations and institutions and companies' names, and uh, final literary, uh, philosophical, uh, political works, authors, etc. The next one. Uh, as I told, having reliable corpora uh, and translation memories and term banks uh, can be very helpful. In fact, having a wealth of reliable corpora can help uh, literary translators save time and energy to put their effort more on segments which need creativity and literary expression. And the final word, literary translators who use cat tools should be technology-wise and use them just with enough care. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks a lot, Mustafa. That was Welcome, very yes. interesting. Yes. Thank you. How Thank to use a much. cat tool for such a novel. Let's see if there are questions in the chat. Uh, not so far. So let me start with one myself. So okay. I got that uh, there were um, many 
terms that would make sense to include in a term base, right? Like cultural references, uh, characters, food, drinks, and so on. So I was wondering when, uh, this could be very useful, but I was wondering when translating into a language like Persian that has suffixes, whether this works so smoothly or there is a, a problem because the word might be translated in a different way if you have to add a suffix or something like that. So uh, um, I, I didn't get your question exactly. Sorry. Okay, yes. So uh, for example, a noun, right? You have a noun in yeah. English and the, yeah. the, in the term base, the corresponding, well, you choose how to translate it into Persian. But then when you go to a segment where this noun occurs, you might have in Persian, if it's an accusative, you, have a, you might have a case marker for accusative. So the term is not exactly rendered like that, but you might need to add something related to morphology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it did not, uh, in, in fact, uh, in, in fact, make a problem at all. Okay. Uh, yeah, the names were. If, if you are talking about the names here, yeah, the name had, uh, in fact, uh, equivalence, and they were put into the term base, and they were, were used. Yes, there are, in fact, inflection, inflections, especially with, with uh, verbs in Persian. Well, again, they can be put into the term base, uh, and um, there was we, we didn't, in, in fact, uh, uh, come with problems there. Okay, thanks. That's good to know that uh, the term is still useful. Um, maybe let me ask you a second one. Yes, please. <laughs> yes, so uh, in your conclusion, I think that your uh, overall impression is positive of CAD tools, that they are useful in consistency more than anything. And that one just needs to be careful and know the technology. But I was wondering if you are a translator that is careful and knows how to use a cat tool in a uh, right way, do you still see any disadvantage? Like could the translation be, uh, let's say less creative or could the translation suffer in any way because you're using a cat tool, even if you are using it uh, correctly? Uh, you see, uh, in fact, uh, the, uh, uh, if we had corpora, okay, we think if we had corpora, it could be uh, helpful for, to translate uh, the novel because you saw there were very uh, many intertextual, uh, in fact, references there. Well, we didn't have any, so it, it didn't cause a problem for us, but um, perhaps sometimes having corpora can be problematic for translating. Um, but, but because we didn't, uh, in fact, come with any problems, well, I think uh, now I think it can be helpful. Okay, so it could be a problem you say, I understand if there was a translation memory from say previous novels translated, that no, could be an no, issue? No, at all, not at all, not at all. We had only one memory for that special project and one term base, which was made for, for that special project. But we think if we had the corpora or term bases from other novels, it could be helpful because it prevented us from long searches. Because when, for example, a novel is translated in Persian language, you cannot translate the title anew. You should go and search to see what was the translation of it, find it, put it in your novel. Okay, it, okay. it makes inconsistencies. Yeah, yeah. yeah Another I inconsistency, yeah, I, 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 I can mention is that if the translator, well, be not careful about the name he puts in the term base, all through the text, uh, that term would be translated inconsistently and in a wrong manner. It, it, it is a risk, one of the risks, perhaps. Okay, thank you. Thank uh, you I'll ask you now a question from uh, James. 
So James yeah. asks, uh, are there any special difficulties with creating corpora for the Persian language? Uh, I don't know because I haven't worked uh, on it, okay? Perhaps this novel can be uh, starting, for example, a corpus for me myself as a translator, okay? But uh, for making a corpora Persian language, uh, difficulties, mm, I don't know, okay? Perhaps uh, the, the permission of the uh, authors, okay? Ethical points can be uh, problems. And uh, in fact, the, I don't know, this is what comes to my mind. Perhaps, uh, perhaps, in fact, uh, the programs, okay, because of what you mentioned about the structure of Persian language, okay, there need to be uh, programs uh, to be, uh, in fact, uh, suitable for Persian language, okay? What, what are these come to my mind at the moment? All right, thanks. Uh, let's see, we have a comment from Mira. Hello, I just wanted to say that I'm a literary translator and I have experience in using CAD tools for technical translations. I agree with Mostafa's conclusions regarding the usefulness of CAD for literary translation. Thank okay, you. so Thank that's you interesting I take from this uh, session that at least uh, today I was hearing that CAD tools, uh, I don't know, not so suitable, but now we have examples, multiple examples in these sessions where CAD tools are used for literary translations and also for translating letters and they have more advantages than disadvantages. It depends on our expectations, okay? What we want from CAD tool and what are the features of our text. If, if you have time, I, I, I can make a, an example. Okay. If you can make a, an example that takes one minute, then that's possible. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah I want to say that at one point in the history, I think pencil could be a technology who could help translators instead of pencil. Well, because we could erase our mistakes. Well, but that was not very fast. But nowadays we are uh, faster technologies, good. So depending upon the features of our text and the features of the programs, we can um, use them to help us and make our um, works easier than what we did before. Okay, that's clear and a nice way to close this talk. Thanks a lot, Mustafa. Thank you, uh, and thank you all. Goodbye.